Hello again. Now today we've got a video I wasn't planning to make, but um, I was investigating a problem and uh, it started to involve all sorts of toys. So I thought I'd um, record it just in case someone found it interesting or maybe useful. Um, I should warn you though before we get started that it does involve electronics and anyone who watches this channel regularly will know that uh, that's not exactly my forte. Um, so if you know what you're doing then I apologise um, and if you don't know what you're doing don't blame me if you blow up your 40 year old computer. So we're back on the ZX81 uh, in pieces at the moment and having a look at the composite video output. I installed this upgrade back in my first ever video, replacing the TV modulator with a Mutant Caterpillar ZX Vid composite board. So whilst it gives an excellent picture, I've since got an RGB to HDMI and I wanted to feed the video output through that. I can get it to work and I do get a beautiful picture, but I do have to wildly raise the voltage sampling thresholds and they tend to wander off as the X81 heats up, requiring me to readjust things periodically, especially as the windows of stable voltages are so small. Ian Bradbury, who works on the RGB to HDMI, said this isn't normal and suggested a few things to check, which is what we're going to have a look at today. So the first thing I thought I'd do is check the output voltage of the ZX81's power supply, just in case it was out of spec. I get about 14.5 volts when it's not loaded. However, this drops to just over 11 volts when it's connected to the ZX81. A quick bit of googling brought up this thread on the Sinclair ZX World Forum, which confirms both these voltages are pretty normal. Just to make sure though, I connected the ZX81 to my bench power supply and set it to 9 volts with a 700 milliamp limit, same as what's written on the Sinclair power brick, but this just gave the same result. So at this point, Ian asked for a photo of the composite video board mod to see if he could recognise the components and check that the voltages were what he'd be expecting. I mean, maybe this board just works slightly different from other ones and all it needs is a special RGB to HDMI profile. So I took the ZX81 apart and removed the modulator cover where the ZX vid board is to take a picture, and it was only then that I remembered there were a couple of pots to adjust the output signal. But whilst I was there, I thought I'd just confirm that the voltage across the 0-5 inputs to the ZX vid board was correct, which it was, so it's probably just the pots. So when I was twiddling those, I wasn't really looking at the voltages, I was just trying to get a good picture using the composite video input on my LCD monitor. But since then I've got an oscilloscope, so I'm thinking that maybe we can connect this up to that and compare the signal with another computer that has a more conventional composite output, and then adjust the pots to see if we can get the voltage levels to be more conventional and perhaps something happier for the RGB to HDMI. Okay, so I've uh, connected up the composite video output from the ZX81 to the oscilloscope and I've fed that through to the RGB to HDMI. I've also got a video trigger configured and we're looking at line 242 of the display. So that's near the bottom of the screen and indeed one of the lines that has the um, inverted K of the cursor on it and uh, that's part of the, uh, the cursor there. Now the thing I noticed um, when I was setting this up is how sensitive the video trigger voltage is. If I lower that very slightly the oscilloscope loses it um, and if I raise it slightly again it, it loses it. So you have to be very very careful configuring this video trigger voltage to get a stable display. What I'll do now is just bring up the um, BBC's waveform. I save that in the reference area of the oscilloscope and we'll just raise that up a bit so you can see the difference between them more clearly. So the BBC's in white and the ZX81's in yellow. Um, so looking at the BBC signal you have this nice sync uh, pulse at the start, then the voltage assumes this level jumps up for a bit of the prompt and then returns to that level. The sync pulse is a little bit shorter than the ZX81's, um, but apparently that's all within spec and OK. Looking at the ZX81 you've also got this sync pulse, but then you've got this weird little step, then the voltage jumps up, um, sits at this top level and then dips down for the K and then returns to the top. And the reason why it's the other way around to the BBC is because the screen on the ZX81 is uh, white uh, and has black pixels on it for the text, whereas the BBC is black and has white pixels on it for the text, so obviously they're going to be round the other way. Um, but the thing that's obviously different is you have this sort of extra little step in here that you don't have on the um, BBC. And the reason for this is this part of the signal is called the back porch, um, or the black level, and it's used to tell the display what voltage the black parts of the image are going to be at. Now, on the BBC, that's actually present in this signal, it's just that you can't see it because there's a bit here where it sets that level and then immediately the display starts and of course that is black so the voltage is the same. Whereas on the ZX81 you can see that there's this extra level before it jumps up um, to give you the white part of the screen. But the 
obvious problem with this, as you can see, is the difference between these two voltages is incredibly small, um, and it's very, very hard to, uh, to find that when configuring the RGB to HDMI. Um, compared to the BBC where the, the two voltages are very, very different. So let's just bring the um, horizontal cursors up and I'll just put the cursor in here so we can see what the difference between these two voltages is um, and then set the B cursor here. Um, so you can see that's actually only 44 millivolts. Um, so it's an incredibly small window that you're trying to find. And as the um, ZX81 uh, heats up, these, these voltages seem to change as well. So I'll just turn those off, the, B, well, the BBC trace off. Um, there we go, and we'll turn the cursors off. So we've just got the ZX81's waveform on there. Um, what we'll do now is we'll zoom in and have a look at this uh, inverted K for the cursor. So I'll just slide across there like that. And once we get to the middle of the screen, we'll zoom in horizontally to have a look at that waveform. So what we're looking at here um, is actually the, uh, the first line of the K where you've got dots. So the line above this is the solid line at the top of the K. The line above that is just white. Um, so this is the first line, this is the vertical bar down the left-hand side of white, and this is the diagonal line on the right-hand side. And as I move down the lines of the cursor, you can see the diagonal line slides in towards the left-hand bar. You get the horizontal bar in the middle, and then the diagonal line moves back out again to the bottom right-hand corner. Then you get the solid black bar at the bottom, and then you're back to white again. So let's just go back up to that uh, top line of dots there. So the thing you you notice about this is how awful this waveform is. It's not, it's not a precisely defined set of edges where the pixels begin and end. It's a sort of wobbly analog mess um, between them. Uh, and the other thing is you notice the voltage levels are incredibly um, inconsistent. So this is black, but its voltage is much higher than this part of the image, which is also black. Um, so when you're configuring one of the other parameters on the RGB to HDMI, which is the voltage level at which um, black turns to, to white, then you have to get that right. And if you get that slightly wrong, um, or when the ZX81 heats up and the voltage has changed, then, then they will move out as well. Um, then pixels that are black will start to shimmer and white and vice versa. So in fact, if we bring up the horizontal cursors again, um, and what I'll do is I'll just have a look, use the B cursor to find out what this voltage at the start of the uh, the left-hand edge of the K is. So that voltage is 1.64 volts or so. And if I bring up the sampling menu on the ZX81 um, and we lower the voltage for, which sets the threshold between the white and the black parts of the image, when we get down to that sort of voltage, 1.66, 1.64, you can see that first line of pixels that make up the inverted K um, starts to shimmer um, with white, and that's exactly because this threshold is so so close here. So things are flickering, and obviously if we lower it a bit more, everything starts to, to go wrong in there. So one of the things that's uh, kind of amazing about this is how the RGB to HDMI does such a fantastic job of um, cleaning up this horrible analog mess um, that comes out of the ZX81 and turning it into this pristine pixelated image. Um, I think that's absolutely incredible um, what a good job it's doing. Okay, so it's time to have a look at uh, these pots. And the first one I'm going to try adjusting is the one on the right, which is the output level, or sort of like a brightness, is how it's described in the ZX vid instructions. Um, so the oscilloscope is showing um, the output uh, with the video trigger on line 242 again. Um, and what I'm expecting is, as I start adjusting this, the uh, wave is going to just sort of shift up and down as the voltage increases and decreases. So let's just have a little turn um, and see what happens before we start playing around a bit more. So if I'm turning it clockwise, you can see that the whole voltage level is uh, dropping on the oscilloscope and the, it's also lost sync and the RGB to HDMI is lost sync as well. So let's come back up again. Um, and I'm turning it anti-clockwise now, and the sync has come back into range, the oscilloscope is locked on and the RGB to HDMI, and I keep turning it, and the voltage just keeps increasing and the wave slides further up the screen. Right, so obviously that's just increasing and decreasing the voltage, but what I can't tell um, as I'm adjusting it is, 
is it just sliding the whole voltage up and down or is it doing something like multiplying it and it's it's squeezing it uh, between the top and the bottom and is it affecting what's going on in here and it's very difficult to see that because the video trigger is um, locking onto the very specific part of the uh, sink and, and it's very difficult to keep that stable as we're playing around with the voltage so the first thing I'm going to do is change the trigger type to be a pulse trigger um, just slide that across to the right to keep it on the screen so instead of looking for the video um, sync pulse, now what we're doing is we're looking for um, just a place where the voltage level drops for a period in excess of nine microseconds. And the reason why I've done that, um, if I bring up the cursors and change to the vertical ones and we shuffle these along, is you can see that the difference, um, well, the, the whole drop here where there's the sync and the back porch, that is 9.7 microseconds. Um, so that's in excess of nine microseconds, obviously. Um, and the only place where that happens in the video signal is at the start of each scan line. Um, if I was to put a lot of black text on the screen, like a big black bar, then possibly that would um, mess this up. But this is a, um, a very easy way of just keeping this uh, wave stable on the screen of the oscilloscope as I play around with the voltage, because all I need to do is keep the trigger voltage um, here somewhere um, in this trough. Um, I don't need to find this very specific sync signal at the bottom here. So I'll turn the cursors back off. Now the other thing I want to know is, is the waveform being compressed as I change the voltage. Um, I'm going to do that by getting the oscilloscope to measure that for me. So I'm going to say, tell me the minimum, the maximum, and the peak to peak voltage. So the minimum at the moment is 1.2 volts, maximum 1.92, and 720 millivolts between the top and the bottom. And the other thing I'll do before I go any further is I'll just measure the uh, difference between the sink voltage and the back porch voltage. So I'll just put the cursors there and I'll move the uh, back porch, well the top cursor just below the back porch and the difference between those two is about 49 millivolts according to this. So let's try uh, adjusting the pot a lot and see what happens to the waveform. Um, so I'll give it a good turn clockwise to reduce the voltage and bring it back down to the sort of levels that uh, the RGB to HDMI is expecting by default. So the RGB to HDMI loses sync um, and at some point the oscilloscope trigger will lose sync as well because that will move out of the range of that little uh, pulse where the sync and the back porch are. So we'll just bring that down there and give it a bit more of a, a turn. Um, and if we stop here. So, I mean, visually I can tell that that waveform is compressed. I don't particularly need the oscilloscope to measure it, but you can see here that the um, peak to peak voltage has dropped to 500 millivolts um, and the, the other voltages have dropped as well. And if I bring the um, cursors up on the screen and we turn, oops, let's leave that where it was, bring them both down, you can see that the difference here has reduced dramatically. Um, We've now only got oh, like 20, 20 millivolts between the sink voltage and the black porch voltage. So I'm thinking that's not a good thing um, because it makes it harder for the RGB to HDMI to find that specific little voltage difference. So I'm thinking the best thing to do is actually just raise the voltage up, up higher. So that's what I'm gonna do, um, at least for now, while I have a think about anything else. Um, so let's turn the um, pot in the reverse direction. Um, anti-clockwise and can't get the screwdriver in there there we go um, raise it dramatically and we'll get it up to a higher level now I could go keep going a lot further um, than I was before so maybe the, the BBC was at 2 volts um, maximum um, maybe I could take it further but I think what I'll do is I'll just set it so the maximum voltage is 2 which will be about the same as that um, I think possibly an analog um, TV would get upset by higher voltages, but I'm not sure. Um, but at least we're worried about the RGB to HDMI here. So set the pulse voltage for the trigger. There we go. We've got a minimum 1.27, maximum of 2, 730 millivolts peak to peak. Um, and if we bring the cursors up on the screen and pop those between the sink voltage and the back porch voltage, we're sort of up at around 
45 or so, depending on how much you, how accurately you turn the knob, 53 millivolts. So I'm gonna leave it there. Um, the only thing I will do is I'll just go into the RGB to HDMI and I will just adjust the sync voltage up um, a bit because we've raised it from before where we started. So let's get it up to about 1.28 and just to get the image stable, I'll raise the Y threshold, which determines the difference between black and white. So that's probably a good place to stop fiddling with the brightness, at least for now. Okay, right, moving on, contestant number two in the left corner, we have the contrast control. Um, so what I'm expecting this to do is somehow um, increase and reduce the difference between the, um, the light and the dark parts of the uh, cursor here. Um, I've got the oscilloscope still configured up with the pulse trigger and it's just looking for that little trough um, with the sink and the back porch signal in it. So it should remain stable when I start twiddling about with things. So let's start just by turning the contrast control um, clockwise and see what happens. Um, so as I'm changing this, um, I can see that the black part there, the black level of the cursor is rising. Um, there's also this massive overshoot is starting to appear at the beginning of the back porch as well. Um, if I turn it the other way, um, then it's starting to, it brings the black level down, but at some point it also seems to bring the white level down as well, at least on some of the scan lines, and we're starting to get this big overshoot uh, up the top here. Um, so Ian gave me a bit of advice, which was to try and minimize the overshoots um, at the bar, start of the back porch and the signal there. I, I don't seem to be able to get rid of them completely, and I'm not sure if I should favor um, removing one overshoot over the other. Um, but I will favor removing the one at the start of the back porch and aiming for kind of a, a bigger difference here between the light and the dark. Um, so if I turn that that way, there we go. I mean, that's, I don't know if that's a good setting, but it seems all right. So let's zoom in and have a quick look at the cursor um, and try and get an idea of what that looks like. Um, so if I now bring up the oscilloscope cursors, um, let's get the bottom one to the sort of maximum black level and the B cursor to be the minimum white level. So it looks like from that, um, oh, probably need to move the A up to miss the first one there. There we go. So we're between all the black and whites there. Um, looks like we've got just over about one point, oh, well, sorry, point two something volts um, for setting the difference between the black and the white level and somewhere in the middle is probably about uh, 1.7. So let's just have a look at the RGB to HDMI. It's currently set to 1.73. Um, if we raise that up to 1.82, it starts to go wrong, which kind of fits what the oscilloscope's showing. And if we come back down, it looks nice and stable until we get to about 1.57, 1.58, which again fits this voltage here. So I'm going to aim for the middle where I said about 1.7. Um, okay, right, the uh, final thing I want to measure uh, is how the signal changes as the ZX81 heats up. Um, so I've configured the pulse trigger again with a uh, healthy trigger voltage so I can watch what happens as it goes up and down. Um, and I've configured the horizontal cursors to line up roughly with the top of the um, sync signal and the bottom of the back porch blanking level. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just save a copy of that um, waveform in the reference area of the oscilloscope um, and then what we'll do is we'll just sit back and leave it for 10 or 20 minutes and just see how the signal develops.
Okay, so the ZX81 has been on for about 20 minutes now, and you can see that the um, voltage levels used by the sink and the back porch black level have uh, reduced a bit. Um, the old one was in white, and the new values are in yellow. Um, and in fact, the cursors that show the position between the two have now, um, well, they haven't moved, but the voltage levels have moved such that the um, black level is now the same as what the uh, top of the sink level was before. So obviously that's going to upset the RGB to HDMI, um, which has lost its picture um, because it's gone out of range of the sync signal. Um, it doesn't look like the white level though at the top has changed very much. Um, so let's try and get the RGB to HDMI working again. Um, so something that's happened is the RGB to HDMI has decided that the uh, the sync's gone so far out it's fallen back on a sub profile of 60 hertz. So it's completely reset all the settings. Um, let's just force it to 50 hertz and go back in here and we'll lower the voltage a bit um, to get the sync back in range. Um, so now the sync value is between 1.24 and perhaps about 1.31. So let's set that to about 1.27 um, and that should be okay. Luckily the um, the level between the black and the white hasn't changed very much. I mean, it probably has, but uh, not enough to take it out of range as the K still looks absolutely fine. So um, obviously something to bear in mind here as well is that the ZX81 isn't actually uh, enclosed in the case. It's just resting in the open air. So maybe it would heat up more quickly if it was in the case and this would happen um, after much less time. Okay, so I think I'll stop there. I'm getting a good picture out of the RGB to HDMI. I mean, I do have to adjust the settings after it's been on for a little while and the voltage changes, but you know, that's no big deal. Um, I've also tried the composite video output directly into my Dell LCD monitor, and that gives a good picture, and also into the video input on my old green screen Commodore CRT, and that also gives a good picture. Um, I have heard there's another modification you can do that just involves a 220 ohm resistor, but that's something for another day. Uh, I'm not really sure I've achieved very much or altered anything. I mean, it, the settings look very, very similar to the ones I had before I began, but you know, when your project is to improve the video display on a ZX81, you're not really doing it because of where you end up, but more because what you learn along the way. Um, so the only thing left is uh, just to mention that since I started making this video, my subscriber count's gone over a thousand. So if you're one of those, thank you very much. I hope you're finding it interesting. Um, and if you want to let me know what your um, what you'd like me to concentrate on next, the, the next video is likely to be something involving the BBC or possibly that Econet interface on the Acorn Electron everyone keeps asking about. But I think that's all for now. So I hope you found that interesting and maybe even useful. And see you next time.